Hi, I'm Andy, project coordinator of Warmly Wheelers, and today I'm going to introduce the bikes uh, and show you some of the things about them. So, um, we're going to start with this Drazen loader, which is to my side. Okay, this is the Drazen loader. Obviously, it's a very specialist bike. It's designed to carry wheelchairs. This is the platform on which the wheelchair will go. And for that to happen, they provide us with a platform. Excuse my back. The platform sits there. We've got to make the platform secure. So these things come down and they prop up the platform because obviously the wheelchair is a fair old weight. When we've done that, we clear the deck. And then usually there's one person either side and we'll wheel the wheelchair onto the platform with the service user facing to the front. Now how the wheelchair is ankled to the platform is really quite ingenious. At the back here we have two anchors. They're on an inertia belt so we press the red button they can stretch out and they're fixed to the anchor point that's on the back of the wheelchair. So it's crossed over at the back, one will go that way and one will go this way. We'll leave them on loose and then we come round to the front and then we've got these other ones that actually sit here and once again we find some at the front of the wheelchair, left and then we find something at the front of the wheelchair, right. Once that's done it's in loose tension and then these uh, winders here wind up the tension to the front, these tensioners here wind up the tension to the back, so between them the wheelchair is anchored. Once it's anchored we'll put the wheelchair brakes on and then the wheelchair is really really secure. The ramp comes away, we can put a seat belt around the service user for extra safety, goes around that's fine, ramp comes away, the props are flipped up and we're ready to go. In terms of the pilot, the rider is a conventional bike setup. We've got very strong uh, disc brakes at the front. Uh, this brake operates both wheels at the front and a very strong hydraulic brake for the back. Twist grip gears, easy as you like. Really nice bike to drive. So that's a Drazen loaded for people with wheelchairs. Uh, this is the Drazen Twister, another very specialist bike. <coughs> got a horizontal tandem. Uh, the people sit side by side, the pilot sits on this side, uh, take off the gears, the brakes and they dominate the steering. Really good for service users that are slightly anxious and therefore the proximity gives them reassurance. Uh, really good for service users that perhaps can't cycle normally but would like to get involved and they can do that with the pedals that are on their side. So we come a bit closer. The pedals on the service user side can either be uh, connected or disconnected. They're disconnected and when they're disconnected they can help going forward so they want to pedal they can but they want just to hang loose and stop pedaling they can also do that. So it gives them the option to join in and contribute or not. Uh, once it's connected which is this little switch here I have to go around and find where the connection is. There it is you heard it click. Once it's collected it just operates like a normal pedal, so they have to keep pedalling. Uh, quite elaborate uh, pedals to make sure their feet are secure. Uh, if service users have small feet, <laughs> this sometimes can be a bit tricky. Um, in terms of the seating, very easy to move this up and down depending on the height. Once they're in, the armrest comes down and they're snug as a bug. Uh, both people get involved with the steering, the pilot dominates. As I say, really popular because you've got that kind of proximity, you feel reassured, you're a part of the experience. Really nice bike. A, a trike push along, there's a handle at the back that you push it along and you can steer with. Uh, this bike is really for those five foot and under. Uh, the stem can come up and down, the seat post can come up and down and the saddle can go back. What's good about this bike is it's a fixed wheeler, so those with a poor lower functionality, their legs will go around with the fixed wheel. As long as they can support themselves in the chair, which does have a thoracic support and a seat belt and can hang on to the handlebars, the rest can be controlled by the uh, care assistant behind. It's a really good bike for those with limited capacity. This is the Purple Panther. 
This is the next largest trike. Uh, once again, it's a fixed wheel, so you notice the pedals, they go around when it moves. It hasn't got gears, so in a way that self-regulates the speed. A person can have a little bit more independence with this one. They can operate it all by themselves. The saddle can gun down. It's just got the one front brake. Uh, it's for people with limited capacity, but want some kind of independence. Uh, it doesn't go too fast, it's nice and stable. Um, fits me and people taller than me. If you're large, the seat belt won't actually work if you're large in girth. Um, but most people that use this are actually self-supporting. So that's the Purple Panther. This is called a Freedom Trike. It's an adult trike. It's really for people that no longer can cycle on two-wheel bikes or never been able to. It's got gears. You change it when you're pedaling. It's got a simple trigger operation for your gears. It's got conventional braking. Um, really need to be quite independent to use this because you can get quite a speed up and because it's a trike it's quite easy to break away one of these wheels if you turn just too sharply at speed you will lose one of the back wheels and I'll just demonstrate this to prove that point so you've seen what happens if you turn uh, a bit sharply at speed they have these characteristics of losing one of the back wheels so there is a risk there if you're not aware and you're not sensible. Uh, for service users uh, with reasonable independence that can follow kind of verbal commands of slow down, they are fine, but there is that element of risk there and that should be understood. This is our yellow hand bike. So these bikes are propelled by the hands going that way. To brake, you bring it back the other way. Uh, this uh, bike has got limited adaptability. The seat can go forward and backwards but it's quite tiresome to make it occur. You need to be really strong with this one because your arms are quite far away. So you need strength in your shoulders um, and you need to be five foot six, six foot no more. There's foot plates, there's no straps there. We could get some straps, but the feet there, it all should be fine. Strong upper body is what's required for this one. Hi, this is the Quest Endurance trike. They're slightly more stable than the Freedom trikes largely because they're not uh, fold away. They've got a bit of suspension on the front, they've got a twist grip, which uh, when you operate you need to stop pedaling. They've got a conventional front brake, slightly different, and that is they've got a reverse pedal back brake, which means actually starting is a bit tricky, because you can't take up that slack in the chain. So that's the only kind of trick with these bikes. They tend to be used by the carers, because it's on these bikes that the tag along is attached. So this is something that's called a tag-along and they attach to these maroon trikes. These are the ones we use. There's a uh, moving bracket at the back that fits here and the service user sits in this uh, saddle here. Um, some of the things that we need to be aware of with this is that the service user is behind the carer. So verbal instructions are very difficult. They need to be essentially quite calm and quite passive because anything they, they are doing that could cause an imbalance can't be seen. We do have uh, wing mirrors on the front to keep you some visual inspection, but the service user does need to be passive and quite content to be in the back. If that's the case, everything's fine. As long as they can sit upright, there are straps across the shoulder and harness to keep them stable, and if they can actually keep themselves sort of supported with the handlebars, this is fine. Uh, for the person who's actually cycling, it's just like a car on a caravan, you need a greater width when you go around corners. It is really as simple as that, but the service user needs to be selected appropriately. This is the blue hand bike, and of the two, uh, probably the better bike, largely because uh, the seat is easier to adjust, it's really important, and there are some retaining straps here for the feet, which makes it slightly more secure. In terms of its propulsion, because these handles are narrower, you're in a much more effective, efficient position. So you don't need to be as strong. Once again, going forward to propel yourself and bringing them back to brake. There is a bit of technique to these machines. And if you find that's difficult, then there does need to be quite a level of support because obviously you need to brake for safety. But this is our hash recumbent bikes. They're, they're very different from the bikes you've seen so far because a person is recumbent when they're sitting down. The legs are out there, they're sitting in that seat. Um, quite independent service users use these. You need a certain amount of physical capacity. 
that steers you through here. There's an understanding going on there. Brakes operate separately. That one's that wheel, this one's this wheel, and there's twist grip gears. So it's quite a sophisticated bike. It does accommodate people with different heights. This central pole can be moved up and down. In fact, if I lift this up, you might be able to see there's some calibration down there, which means once it's been set up for you, which is usually a trial of two, we've got a calibration that's perfect for you. Um, just to recap, the service user needs to be fairly independent and able, because uh, these bikes can go quite quickly. A care assistant supporting really a cycling behind to give verbal guidance.